couple other things before we head off. What about matters to do with sexual miseducation, primarily porn and um, escort services? And the reason why I say that, this is something that I didn't really realise until maybe I would say maybe like four or five years ago. I didn't realise how many men um, solicit um, escorts. And I'm talking about men who are in their 20s, 30s, men who outwardly appear very confident, attractive, but because it's like seen as the easy option. Um, so I found I've come across a number of men who like, whether they're addicted or that's what they, so when they're used to obviously sleeping with like escorts or like sex workers, then it's very difficult to then have a relationship because what you're used to getting like from obviously an escort is going to be very different in terms of how to navigate an actual real relationship. And that's also where I've come across a number of men, they're learning about how to please a woman has been via either porn of by some escorts that they're sleeping with. And the reality is the escort is only going to say or do things that's going to please you. It doesn't mean she's actually satisfied. So I'm just wondering, that, well, obviously we're going to kind of deal with that, but I don't know if you've come across that as being an issue, but that's something that I've seen in the last, like, like I said, four to five years. I was very surprised because I thought that was just for people of a certain age, certain demographic, and it's a lot of young even black men from London, inner city London, that that are soliciting. Um, again, each their own. If that's what you want to do, but then they find it difficult to like actually form a, like a, an effective and a long term relationship. I don't know if that, have that's something that you've kind of come across with, not maybe necessarily your, your your immediate friends, but your peer groups. Is that something that you've noticed? Yeah, kind of, but not really. So like, I'm a bit of a like a I say like a popular loner. So. Some I've got stories, but because everyone knows probably my friends are or the or the, the, the <laughs> I just keep them. <laughs> but one thing I can say is generally like when as a man you're coming up in the game trying to learn, there's nowhere to learn, right? Most men just learn from those avenues, I I think, because where else? Like if I think about me when I was younger. Right. My curiosity led me to LimeWire. So like I still have videos on my computer that I probably downloaded in like oh eight, oh seven, oh six, right? That were essentially from you know, like there were people in those generations selling courses, right? They were basically like hacked courses that someone put on LimeWire. LimeWire for you kids is basically or it's not like torrents now, maybe, but you can basically download it. So my curiosity led me to getting like the Kama Sutra in school. <laughs> but my curiosity is not just this, it's every part of my life I like to learn. So it wasn't like that knowledge was applied. I was like, oh, what's this? this is interesting. I'm curious about this. Um, so the point is, that's an anomaly. The average person is going on these websites and, oh yeah, you do this. And that's where the whole concept of the jackhammer or the jackrabbit came in because that was popular in, even like when we think about a lot of people's kinks and, and fantasies, what came first, the kink or seeing the kink on some website and then wanting to replicate it, it's like, so the point I'm saying is that's the avenue a lot of people learn from, which isn't, isn't the best. And there's a lot of relearning people will have to do to understand that reality doesn't match that. And that's why sometimes you got to come away from that stuff because the level of it, the level of excitement that gives you, you just reality you can't match. And then there's even porn induced erectile dysfunction that a lot of guys get. Um, and people are having these issues younger. It used to be where people get to that 35 and they have issues. I know people way, way younger that are having, yeah, it's not what it should be at that age. <laughs> so you have to somewhat unlearn. And for me, I don't judge people. I know people that have got down certain routes and most of these guys know how to maneuver. So this is just something else because there's a spectrum. It's not everybody who goes to solicit that is lacking. Um, my assumption is that it could be a case that is, I don't know. I, I don't fully understand it, but people who've gone down this avenue, I've always quizzed them. I'm like, why does, what is it like? Because that's how I am. If anyone knows me, I ask a lot of questions. 
And how I understand it is people just want no stress and maybe the transactional element um, reduces that stress. But I think a key part of intimacy is the bond and that must be missing. My curiosity says that's missing with that. I don't know. Um, these are what just you said, now what you said is actually important. And again, just for making it clear, I'm glad you said that we're not, I'm not saying it or I don't, I don't want to come across like I'm shaming or judging. Each to their own, right? I, I was just more, and this was maybe a learning experience for me to try and understand because, I don't know, maybe because I was always brought up to be like there's more pleasure in the conquest and it might be from an egotistical perspective. I couldn't understand why someone preferred the transactional element when it's not like real. Yeah. But again, some people have their different reasons that like some men are more than capable of, you know, attracting the opposite sex, but they just want something quick and easy, but that's not something I've never really understood. So that's why I've really actually been reading um, a really good book, biography by, um, what's that Arsenal player? I can't forget his name. Nicholas Bentner. Mm. I don't know if you follow football, but he's a former Premier League player that used to play for Arsenal when he played for Juventus. And he was speaking very candidly and he just said like, he's someone who is, you know, he's an attractive guy. He's used to dating a number of women and he spoke about some of his you know, exploits, but he was saying that, and like in the Premier League, it's very common for footballers to solicit um, prostitutes and escorts. And he was like, the reason why is because then it's less likely that they're going to be exposed. Right? And he said they'll prefer sex workers over civilians, he called them, like normal women or not. And he just said, because a sex worker or prostitute is unlikely to do like a kiss and tell story. So I understood the rationale behind it, not necessarily that I agree with it, but. I just wanted to, it's it's like a, a different insight and again for for those men who are obviously engaged in soliciting um escorts or or watching um porn the issue or one of the main issues that I have with that is that because if you've indulged in that for a number of years you might think that is how to like satisfy a woman not realizing that the the um sex worker is play, she's performing for you Likewise, the porn you're watching, the woman is performing for you. So it's not an accurate depiction of female sexual satisfaction or female pleasure, or if you want to have intimacy. And that's that's one of the challenges I'm finding that men who have like engaged in those activities for a certain period of time, for them, because they're experiencing sex, they think they are the man in the bedroom, not realizing that the woman that they are or the women that they're sleeping with, they're playing for the camera or playing for the, playing up to them. To, to massage their own ego so that's why again you would need that like you mentioned the relearning or the unlearning that those men would need to do to then understand oh actually this is actually how to satisfy a woman because and every woman's different some women have different challenges whether it's anorgasmia um arousal non-concordance and all these things that one needs to learn that you won't find generally from porn or with an escort because again they're playing for camera or playing up to the guy so but anyway we've spoken more than enough again tickets are available the 29th of june yes, men yes. up in their game a course i mean sorry a conference seminar workshop however you want to call it men only talking about a number of matters um touched on a little but we're really going to really delve in there's going to be a number of speakers Paul's going to be one of those speakers i'm going to be one of those speakers as well as Cam Fraser, a couple of Derek, and I think there's some other people that again check out the website, check out the IG page. Thank you for your time, Paul. Is there anything else? Any last comments before we wrap up? Let's, let's get it, man. Let's make history. Most men think they're amazing in the bedroom, but statistics from women say different. Besides, when you want to up your game, when you want to do better, where do you go? I'm hosting the number one conference in the world, giving men invaluable tips to up their game. This is a virtual conference. You can learn from international speakers in the comfort of your home. Learn how to fix down there. Learn how to last for longer. Learn how to attract a mate, how to build your confidence and dominance. This is the place for you. Join 3,000 men from all around the world coming together with one aim. Men, let's up our game. Reserve your sport today.